الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى أهله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, today in Sha Allah we get to start Hadith number sixteen, and our Hadith today features a new companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that we have not seen yet, and his name is Al Mughira ibn Shurba رضي الله عنه. Al Mughira ibn Shurba is a very prominent companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Quite famous. And he's someone who's from the tribe of Thaqif. Now who knows which city is Thaqif from? Like Quraysh we know is from Makkah. Thaqif is from which tribe? Any know, anybody knows? From the famous tribe of Ta'if. A little trivia that you want to know that will help you in Islamic trivia. He's from the tribe of Ta'if. It is described when it comes to his physical appearance that he was extremely tall. And he had a very broad stature. So they said that his shoulders were wide and his arms were big. Like he had big guns, as we say today. MashaAllah, well built and he commanded haiba whenever he walked into a room. So he was like what you would call a perfect bodyguard. And he was actually the bodyguard of the Prophet ﷺ. It is written in his biography that he lost his eyesight. Now how did he lose his eyesight? Some say the reason he lost his eyesight is because there was a solar eclipse and he wasn't careful and he looked at the rays of the sun and he lost his eye. Which is why till today you and I wear protection and this is a lesson for all of us, don't be stupid. Don't have this fake bravado, you look at the sun and subhanAllah, and he lost his eyesight. Some say that perhaps his eyesight was injured but he actually lost it in the Battle of Yarmouk and Qadisiya, which are famous battles in the Islamic history. One of the most notable things about him, Al Mughira ibn Shurba, is that he attended Bay'atul Ridwan, which is basically he gave, gave the famous pledge to the Prophet ﷺ when it was reported that Uthman عنه, had been killed by the Quraysh, and the Prophet ﷺ took a pledge of allegiance, said, Who's with me right now to avenge Uthman? And he pledged to die till the end for this cause. So that's something that is very notable because Allah praises those individuals in the Quran. Now, if you forgot everything I said so far, make sure you remember this. One of the most um, remarkable things he's known for is that Al Mughira is considered one of the most clever human beings amongst the Quraysh and the Arabs in general, at that time at least. Imam Zuhri says there are five who are considered the most clever under pressure. Like if you have a stressful situation and you need a quick solution and a problem solver, you look no further than these five individuals. Amongst them are Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, Amr ibn al-As, and from Thaqif is al mughirat ibn Shurba. Very, very smart, quick at his feet. And that's why Umar radiallahu anhu made him a governor of Basra and Bahrain. And because he was a very good politician, tactician, strategic thinker. During his life, al mughira ibn Shurba, he hung out with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa traveled with him, he was his bodyguard. One small story comes to mind is that during the, uh, during the year of Hudaybiyah, when the Prophet ﷺ was trying to reach a treaty with the Quraysh, he's a bodyguard and he would stand right beside the Prophet ﷺ. Quraysh is sending negotiators they, so they can negotiate and reach an agreement with the Prophet ﷺ. And who do they send? <coughs> His cousin, Urwa ibn Mas'ud. Urwa, in the process of negotiation with the Prophet ﷺ, for some weird reason, he kept reaching for the beard of the Prophet. It's like a weird Arab thing they did back in the days. Well, in the process of negotiation to perhaps like harass or like intimidate the other side, they would grab your beard. And every time he would do it, his cousin Al Mughira would like wrist, -la wrist slap him with the, the back of his sword and be like, get your hand away, get your hand away. Until he did it too many times to the beard of the Prophet. And then Al Mughira says, keep your hand to yourself or you won't have a hand. Keep your hand to yourself, or you're not going to have a hand. And you know, scholars, they mention this to show his love for the Prophet The last thing I want to mention about him, and that leads me to a bit of a tangent, which I, is a near and dear to my heart. Today will take two, three minutes longer than usual. Those of you who have the ability to join, join. Otherwise, you know, whatever is easy for you. al mughira ibn Shurba, when the fitna started between the companions of the Prophet between Ali radiallahu anh and Muawiyah radiallahu anh. He sided with Muawiyah radiallahu anh. 
And this is something that we know in Islamic history. Ali radiallahu anh was right. Muawiyah radiallahu anh was wrong. He sided with Muawiyah radiallahu anh, and that's why he's seen as a very controversial companion. And <clears throat> this leads me to the tangent that I want to start now, and that is, my dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to the shortcomings of the companions of the Prophet wasallam, what are the adabs that we should have? How do we approach the dissent and the disagreement that kind of rose between the companions of the Prophet ﷺ after the Prophet ﷺ left the scene? What mannerisms are we to observe? Because I have come across individuals who have not studied Islam, who have not grounded themselves in Islamic history. What they do is that they start lashing out against the companions of the Prophet ﷺ in ways that make you cringe. <clears throat> Like these are people who have read two articles on Islam and now they feel they're qualified to give an opinion. It's like a guy trying to learn surgery from YouTube videos and now he feels like he has something to say. Well, if you're not grounded and you, are not, you have not properly studied, I mean, even if you have, what are the adabs and mannerisms that you and I have been taught when it comes to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ? Imam Ibn Hajar writes in Fathul Bari, Ittafaqa ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah that the Sunni Islam has reached consensus on this matter. Ummah, from the beginning of time till now, has unanimously agreed that we as Muslims, we do not mention the companions of the Prophet ﷺ except with good. We say the best things about them in the best terms. And whatever disagreement that rose and appeared amongst them, we remain silent and we do not indulge in it. That is, has been the sund standard Sunni theology from the beginning of time. And he goes on to say, That amongst them who made the right conclusion or reached the right conclusion, Allah will reward them. And those who made the wrong decision, we make excuses for them. This is how we approach the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Are we insecure about the companions? Uh, why are we so protective of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ that we don't want to highlight the skeletons in the closet, as you would say? The reason is, my dear brothers and sisters, because they're the legacy of our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. You attack them, now you have opened the door to attacking the Prophet ﷺ himself. Because they are his immediate, they are his immediate, they are the fruits of his labor. And that's why we exercise a lot of caution. Another reason, why well, we're, we're so careful when it comes to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ because Allah praises them in the Qur'an. What do you do with that? Allah says, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ What about them? رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوعًا Muhajirun, the Ansar, the early, the latter, the later. Allah has been pleased with them. And that's why till today, Muslim culture, whenever we say, Umar radiallahu anh's name, we say Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh. That's how we've kind of grown up, being very respectful and deferential to the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummah, ukhrizat lin nas, that you had been the best ummah, that you have been the best that humanity has to offer. Umar bin Khattab comments on this, he says, notice Allah doesn't say, Antum khayru ummah. Oh, Kuntum khayra ummah, he didn't say, Allah doesn't say, Antum khayra ummatin ukhrizat lin nas. Allah says, Kuntum khayra ummah, in past tense. Because this refers to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. In Surah Al-Hashr, an entire half page is dedicated to praising the companions. And then Allah, after giving all this praise, He says, He tells uh, you and I, who will come after them, the protocol when it comes to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, that He just praised. What does Allah say? وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِن بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ Those that come after the companions should say, رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا Ya Allah, forgive us and our brothers who have preceded us in Iman. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلْ And let there not be any malice and rancor and hatred left in our hearts for our brothers. That we approach them with the best of thoughts. And ahadith in this regard are unbelievable. And I'll share with you a few and then inshallah I'll end. Hadith comes from four companions of the Prophet. Aisha radiallahu anh, Imran ibn Hussein, Abu Huraira. All of them say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, 
خیر الناس قرنی That the best generation is my generation ثم الذين يلونه ثم الذين يلونه And then the generation that's after them And then the generation that's after them These are the top three generations known as as salaf The pious three generations And then a hadith comes in Bukhari and Muslim That Abu Sa'id al-Khudri says a time will come when a Muslim army will reach or a Muslim army will go out for a mission and they will ask amongst themselves are there any companions of the Prophet ﷺ left? So somebody will say yes we have a hand, handful of companions that are left and the hadith goes on to say فَيُفْتَحُ لَهُمْ and they will be given victory because of that and then a time will come when people will ask are there any companions of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ left amongst us? And they will say yes, فَيُفْتَحُ لَهُمْ And they will be given victory. And then a time will come when they will be asked, are there any companions of the companions of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ left? And they will say yes, and they will be given victory. This is the status of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. One of, my, one of the most chilling incidents in this regard is when Khalid ibn Walid, Hadith comes in Muslim. He's someone who accepted Islam later. Got into an argument with Abdurrahman ibn Auf, who accepted Islam much earlier. Both are companions. One is senior, one is junior. Khalid ibn Walid got into a tussle with Abdurrahman ibn Auf, and he said something very unpleasant. The Prophet ﷺ heard this. And he's talking to who? A companion regarding a senior companion. Imagine a non-companion talking about a companion. He says to Khalid bin Walid, لا تسبوا أصحابي Don't you dare trash talk about my companions. فوالذي نفسي بيدي By the one in whose hand is my soul. Were you to spend mountain of Uhud in gold, you would not reach the reward of a handful that they have spent. Because of the sacrifices they've made. Because of the loyalty that they, were, that they showed to the Prophet وسلم, when he had no one. When he had no one to believe in him, they validated him. And that means something to Allah and his messenger. So bottom line, my dear brothers and sisters, is that when it comes to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, just take this with you. You and I learn to give benefit of the doubt. Whenever the companions of the Prophet ﷺ are mentioned, their shortcomings particularly, their quarreling, their disagreements, you and I learn to give benefits of the doubt because I'm sure you have heard this on the khutbah. That the khatibs often end their khutbah by saying what? Allah, Allah hafi ashabi. The Prophet ﷺ is imploring us that when it comes to my companions, fear Allah. La tattakhidhuhum gharadan min ba'di. Don't take them as target practice after me. Why? فَمَنْ أَحَبَّهُمْ فَبِحُبِّي أَحَبَّهُمْ Because whoever loves them is because of my love that they love them. وَمَنْ أَبْغَضَهُمْ فَبِبُغْضِي أَبْغَضَهُمْ And whoever hates them is because of the hate that they harbor for me. And I end with this. And this is, wallahi, should be carved in gold when it comes to this issue. This is, like I said, if you've forgotten everything, just remember this. And this is that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the fifth righteous Khalifa, he was asked about the companions and their disagreements. And the fitna that erupted between the companions. He was asked, how do we deal with this? Who was right? Who was wrong? So, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz said, and we should memorize this. He says, Tilka fitan, thalika fitan, waqallahu minna suyufana, fala nakhudu bihi bi al sinatina. Those fitans that the companions unfortunately got tangled up in, Allah saved our swords from it. Then why would we soil our tongues with it? So we leave it at B because kuntum kullu, uh, what is Allah says in the Quran? تِلْكَ أُمَّةٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَلَكُمْ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ That generation has gone. They had their deeds, you have your deeds. وَلَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And Allah will not ask you about their deeds, but your deeds. So you worry about that. سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَسِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَب